G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be having a look at a prop. This is one of the things that has been coming up in my comment section a lot more lately. A lot of people have been requesting for me to play some props, so we're going to be having a look at the F8F1B. The F8F1B is one of the more interesting planes in the game, being a sort of plane that's put in limbo between those props and the so-called super props. But before we talk about the F8F1B detail, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera GX calls itself the world's first gaming browser with features tailored specifically towards gamers, especially those who cannot afford powerful computers. Opera's GX control feature allows you to limit the amount of CPU and RAM usage by the browser, which is very useful for those on laptops or older CPUs trying to allocate as much of their processor as possible for gaming. I recently polled the community asking what resolution do you watch my videos at, and the most common response was something along the lines of less than 1080p because my internet sucks. Opera GX actually has a feature to specifically help people with low internet speeds. Opera GX comes with the ability to limit its bandwidth usage, giving you a better experience while multitasking. Opera GX also comes with a hot tabs killer, can force pages to display in dark mode only, easy pop-outs for social media, and comes with a free rudimentary VPN. Opera GX is my default browser on my PC and has been for over 6 months, and I've been pleased with the feature set and the wealth of customization options available. My personal favourite feature of Opera GX is its video pop-out feature, which allows you to watch any videos displayed in browser such as YouTube videos or Twitter live streams, and place and resize them around your screen while allowing you to continue working on assignments or playing games. Opera GX is a browser I can genuinely recommend, its features and customizations are unparalleled, and best of all, it's free. So download Opera GX for free in the description below. Even if you try it out for 5 minutes, it helps the channel out greatly and allows me to fund upgrades such as the recent upgrade to my Ryzen 9 5950X. Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. In War Thunder, the Bearcat is one of those planes that has been around basically forever. The F8F1B, I don't remember when it was introduced, but it was definitely after I was able to unlock it. The F8F1B used to be the go-to super prop just about for everything. It would compete with the BF109 K4, it would compete well with the Focke-Wulf 190D13. And of course the Tar 152H was in the game but it was pretty terrible at the time. It didn't have an air spawn and it was a little bit less manoeuvrable which kind of sucked for it. But now at this point in time we have a lot more planes at that 5.7 to 6.7 range and we have a fair amount of jets starting to fill those lower ranks as well. Yak-15s, Heinkel 162s, whilst they have been in the game for a long period of time, we also have some 70s that are joining the fray and sort of beefing it out a little bit more. So it makes me think, why is this tier so dead? One of the reasons that this plane is not so fun to fly is because of the queue times. The queue times in this match roughly around maybe two minutes, two and a half minutes, and that's kind of long for a War Thunder queue time. Most of the queues that I go into are sort of done within 30 seconds, if that. And here we are with matches that are half full and a two and a half minute queue, and it makes me wonder why. Now, the first thing that I think about when I think of this high tier are the bombers. There are plenty of high tier bombers like the JU-288, the uh, B-29 and the Lincoln or the Lancasters, the B-17s even, uh, particularly the later ones. These types of planes used to clog up the matchmaker, and that's nothing against the pilots of course. This is just the way that the game worked at the time. There would either be a whole team of bombers on one side and a whole team of fighters on the other, or there would be the other way around. And at one point, either the bombers would bomb out all of the bases in the airfield and win the match, with the enemies being unable to do absolutely anything, or the other way would happen, where the bombers would just get slaughtered, leaving about two fighters to cover for several bombers. For me, and for everyone else who played that tier, it was a pretty substandard experience, but the matches were still heavily populated. A little while after that was uh, sort of brought up as a more popular issue, there was a fix for it, where maximum number of bombers was reduced to four in a match. Now this has basically stayed till this day and the matches were just about the same size. So what killed this tier? 
I have thought about this for a while, and the only thing that I can think of is repair cost. All of these planes, at this high tier, consistently have a high repair cost. B-29, insanely high repair cost. The uh, G-56, insanely high repair cost. P-51H, insanely high repair cost. Spitfire Mark 24, insanely high repair cost. The list goes on. The high repair cost has literally ruined a whole battle rating. From 5.7 to 6.7, you get very few matches, despite there being plenty of planes. And whilst the matchmaker tries its best to balance things out, there's only so much you can do when no one wants to play a plane that you pay 30,000 silver lions to maybe earn 15k and die. For me, that is the real nail in the coffin for this battle rating. These battle ratings are normally pretty good, like the high tier prop combat is fantastic. It's really engaging, there are plenty of people who more or less know what they're doing, and the only time that you end up really coming through is if you keep a level head and uh, soldier through. But unfortunately, because of these sort of repair costs, we're left with a bit of crap. And it's not great. I think the repair costs should be lowered for this high tier. But let's return to the gameplay. I see a uh, BF-109, a G-56, and a TAR-152. For me, the TAR-152 is the biggest threat because the BF-109K has been absolutely nuked by the P-51. Poor Nigel, poor Nigel. But uh, TAR-152, I'm going to spray a lot here. I have the ammunition, but I want to make sure this TAR is killed because a 2v1 with a G56 is going to be a surefire loss. And the P51, I can't guarantee that he's going to stay and help, but I can assume that he's going to at least try. Try might not be enough. But I managed to kill the TAR-152 anyway, and the G56 is next on the menu. He goes for a little bit of a last minute head-on, so I do the exact same, and we both come away with nothing. The G56 is now going into a spiral, heading downwards, and I decide to join him. Now the Bearcat is really good at losing a lot of speed. It's basically a souped up Hellcat, and for me that really makes the plane enjoyable, because I like the Hellcat. It's it's basically a Hellcat with better roll rate, better climb rate, better guns, uh, and a similar turn rate. Maybe it's a little bit fatter uh, relative to its opponents, but that's okay, because this plane is more than capable of shredding everything at its BR. Once I've managed to take out these two at altitude, it's pretty much game over. The Focke Wolf 190 and Focke Wolf 190. Both of them are twins. They're from the same squadron. They're pitching up straight at me. I'm going to go for a little bit of a critical hit on the Focke Wolf 190D below and then pitch straight up for the P the other guy who's probably going to roll over but is more than likely going to get sprayed on by a boom and zooming P51 who uh, I've basically set the kill up for nicely, which is pretty good. I didn't realize this at the time, I didn't think he'd land any hits, but it's okay because I'm going to go into a vertical, store all of that uh, speed as altitude, and then roll over again to ensure my altitude advantage. Being in props, your altitude is your lifeblood. If you are not the top plane, if you're not the plane at the highest altitude, then you're going to probably get dived on by someone with higher altitude than you. The only exception to this is where it doesn't matter is if you can effectively energy fight this guy with a slight energy disadvantage. In that case you might be a Russian prop with uh, low altitude, so maybe like under 3000 meters. You could be an American prop that's extremely fast where you can do that sort of stuff. Or you could just be a maybe like a late Spitfire that just has insane energy retention. The Bearcat can kind of do that. But for me, I would prefer to be the highest in the room. Anyway, looking at the uh, enemies that are remaining, we have a Doe 335, not a threat at all unless he's above me, and the Tar-152 who is just about sacrificing all of his altitude to chase a single P-47. Absolutely not worth it at all. I would just let the P-47 sit and rot and uh, keep climbing if I were that Tar-152. Now, the P-47 here is engaging with the Tar-152 and in a turn fight at that. So we have two people making excellent mistakes here, both uh, playing their planes exactly the way you should. But uh, we have the Tar-152 looking like a more and more juicy target as I come closer. I let them know in the chat that I'm going to be engaging the Tar-152 and ignore the 288 because he's at low altitude. We're all super props and we're all going to have a good climb rate to come and shoot him down. Also. 
we were grinding the event at this time and I thought, you know what, if he's going to climb the space then I'm just going to farm AA and farm the timer. So, P47 here looking like he's going to set up a nice kill for me and it turns out the Tar 152 is a lot slower than I thought it was. I had to reduce my throttle in order to let the rudder get on target and I managed to shear his wing off very, very nicely. Super easy kill and that's all she wrote for this match. So, props, keep your altitude and uh, basically don't, don't throw it away, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I will ask you, do not throw away your altitude so easily. Hold on to it very tightly because that's the thing that is going to let you survive through a match of RRB. And in fact, that's the main thing that will make you exceed and, and do so well at RRB is getting an altitude advantage over your opponents. Even if it's slight, even if it's only a kilometer, that kilometer makes every single bit of difference. So, what are we going to do against jets? We know what we're going to do against props and that's climb. Well, what are we going to do against jets? There's a bit of a conundrum there. You see, a jet is a lot faster than you, and when they're faster, you need to try and make them slow. And if they're just going to stay fast, well, there's not a whole lot you can do there. But, of course, making them slow with your teammates, who are also jets, is always going to help. So what I'm doing here is I'm just chasing some dots. Now, this is an afternoon or an evening map. Um, I'm not confident that there are not jets above me. And if there are going to be jets at an altitude advantage over me, I don't want that. Now, it turns out these guys are just bombers, but it's my point still stands. I wanted to also let the timer or the match sort of drag on a little bit, and that allows a couple of jets to either sustain a bit of damage, or alternatively, get into a cluster and slow down. When a jet is confident that there are going to be some easy targets around, they're going to play a little bit more poorly and are going to bleed a little bit more speed. You see, with props, you want altitude, and with jets, you want speed, more than anything. But of course, having both is always amazing. And in this case here, the Bearcat can dive to about 800 kilometers per hour, and the 262 maxes out at about that much as well. Not only that, but the Bearcat accelerates quite, quite well, and a lot better than the uh, 262, by virtue of it being a propeller-driven aircraft. And so you're going to have that opportunity to catch 262s 162s, Horton 229s, all those types of planes out, off guard when they're turn fighting. And that's what you have to do with jets. You have to jump them. And you have to make sure that you don't get uh, jumped by them and that you don't put yourself in a situation where they can just run you through. You need to keep your speed, keep your altitude in a jet, and uh, maybe bomber hunting in the Bearcat is a bad idea. Maybe not so that I'm going for the 288, but I really do feel sorry for the Lincoln, that thing. That's a sad plane. It's a it's a very sad plane. But um, stealing kills is also very sad. I, if a bomb is burning like that, honestly, just leave it because it doesn't matter. That's one kill. There are plenty of other kills that you can get. And if you're grinding, you're best off going for a win over going for a single kill. If you're going to sacrifice your whole plane for a single kill that's going down then I would highly recommend that you don't and look for something else to shoot out instead, even if it's just AAA. Even if it's just AAA or pillboxes or something like that, that's going to bring along a win more than it is going to bring along a kill steal. Not only that, but by kill stealing, you don't really gain the favor of your friendlies. And so, yeah, they're less likely to help you. And I don't blame them, to be honest. If you're having a bad day and someone just keeps taking your kills, you know, someone's on fire, someone's missing a wing, someone's missing their tail control, and they're all heading to the ground and they all get stolen, I would be pretty pissed off, especially if I was only getting one kill a game and dying to, I don't know, three or four guys like fucking Piper Perry. That's uh, not going to be a really fun day, and, you know, having that is just a little bit of salt on the wound. Anyway, speaking of salt on the wound, we have a couple of uh, wounds here that we are going to salt. There are a lot of enemies down here, and you can see I'm reaching that really high speed. My rudder is starting to lock up, and so I need to bleed a touch of speed, just a little bit, to keep the rudder in check, because there are Tar 152s and Heinkel 162s below me, and a uh, 262 as well. We're basically going to pick our targets here. There's a Meteor, there's a couple of 262s. Who are we going to pick? It's going to be the Meteor, because the Meteor is flying in a straight line away from everyone. Gonna spray a little bit, he's missing a wingtip, 
and I'm not going to follow through with that. I'm going to go back up for altitude, throw the weapon on, and maybe the meteor will crash, maybe he'll make it back to base. No, he's going to crash. But even if he did half make it back to base, it's not worth chasing after. There are bigger fish to fry here, and there are more kills to be had here than chasing after a single one. So, we're looking next at uh, someone who might need help, and that is the uh, F2G looking for that TAR 152. I quickly check to see what the 262 is doing in order to preserve my plane. And it looks like the 162 or the, the 152 is traveling in a straight line. Makes it very easy for me, and I put up into the vertical going in for the next one. You can see I've maintained a lot of speed and more altitude than anyone else in the uh, clusterfuck here. And this is going to produce a really nice result. Tar 152 here, I'm going to spray a little bit and I managed to shear his wing off. 162 looks like it's next and the one, uh, the, the 262 is also looking pretty juicy there, both uh, of them. But uh, unfortunately for me, one of them gets shot down by the F2G. Now the 162, I, I don't like the 162. I've heard heaps of people say that they like it. Um, I know Smeagol really likes it, but... Uh, I mean, maybe look away, Smeagol. I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. But um, Puxastora gets absolutely wrecked. 262 or 162 gets set on fire with a, a last ditch bullet. And it's all over Red Rover. There's not a whole lot that jets can do when they've been turning and bleeding their speed. F2G there looks like he wants to try and secure my kill for me, but uh, fires. Fires are working wonderful for me this match, and I've been very fortunate. But seven kills, seven kills. Two of them bombers, but otherwise seven kills by having an energy advantage. That is an easy seven kills, and all of this has happened in ten minutes. That's pretty impressive. So ten minutes, seven kills. It's probably going to be a hundred KSL. We'll have to see when the uh, loading screen finishes up. But it's a pretty impressive match to have just for. A couple of uh, little steps that you take to play your plane a little bit more conservatively. Ladies and gentlemen, get your altitude, never let it go. And there we go, 100k silver lines just like that. Who needs repair costs when you can have the Bearcat? Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, and uh, remember, download Opera GX in the description below. Thank you guys for watching.